Hey you guys, I hope everyone's doing well. I know it's been a long time since I've posted a video. I've been so busy with work that I just haven't had time to post anything at all. Um, which has kind of been frustrating because I've had some games like Metro and stuff to review and I haven't got those reviews out. So the likelihood is I probably won't receive anything from them. Um, but I will get those reviews out anyway. I probably just won't receive anything from them at all in the future. But... Uh, that's not really where my channel is kind of mostly around, it's mostly around swingerboard computers amongst other things, so I thought uh, I thought we'd take a look. Now what I did was I bought a, a, what it was called is an in, in Ingersoll, it was a it was a 5 inch, a uh, 4.5 inch CRT display black and white and uh, I'm going to shove things in front of the camera here because they're going to look quite weird. I've taken it apart, I've dismantled it. So we've got the CRT here, which I've safely dismantled with the help of the folks over on the CRT uh, TV Discord. And uh, it basically re required a screwdriver and some fiddling with this little thing here, which is connected to this thing here, which puts out a lot of volts for the CRT. Now the main issue with this is it didn't really function that well. The um, if I move this out of the way slightly, I can sort of show you where where everything went wrong. So we got a nice little front end here. The clock still worked. Uh, the display still worked. The buttons on top obviously need fixing up. If you can see that, you can see one of them's missing. It's not missing, but it's been come unstuck. The person who'd had it has been in here and tried to do repairs before and had failed. This uh, aerial also didn't seem to be disconnected in the back there. I've reconnected that now. Um, and I've reconnected the main board um, for the for the plug as well as the board for the digital clock it's here and uh, these buttons on top do the digital clock and one of them dim one of them does a dim uh, bright and dark and I don't know if that was for the TV or just for the clock itself I'm presuming possibly just for the clock on the back uh, on the front of the main board here we've got some various different dials that didn't seem to do much we've got a TV switcher which I couldn't tell if it was I think it was switching between TV and and uh, and and radio, but I'm not entirely sure because I couldn't get any radio t signal tuned in with these dials. And all the tuner is is some threads attached to some metal clip, uh, plastic clips, and they're attached to these dials here, which wind up something or other. And I'm not entirely sure why, but as certain things in here seem a bit odd, I think this may be the some sort of weird ass coil that isn't connected to anything either some things are a little bit odd, I'm not entirely sure I've been poking around and trying to figure out what to do with it so that's the overboard, it's a nice little machine uh, machine wise but it didn't do anything and I got it for £10 the guy wanted 15 I put in an offer for 6 got it for £6, £4 postage, so £10 in total and my plan is to renovate this little thing and make it better. Now the good thing is the power supply comes modular. I don't have any of the tools currently to be able to test what power that comes out of. The speaker is completely separate to everything and comes on its own two pin wire, if I can show you behind. Uh, it comes on its own two pin wire. So this is the speaker here. Um, this is part of the main board. This is also part of the main board. Um, we've got a ground signal here. We've got various different things on this board which tells us kind of what is on there. Um, it's nicely drawn out too, so if I can get some schematics and stuff, I can take a look at that. But uh, the various things on here, this I think goes to the 9 volt battery at the back. And there's a 9 volt slot on the back of the casing here for a battery, so I think one of those wires goes to this lovely compartment here where you can stick a square battery, which is nice. Now it says 1 amp max in there. Um, and that's for the DC jack that is actually on the back of the main board. My dogs are going to start to play because they're being a pain in the backside. Uh, but I'm going to cut the video here and go and make a nice brew before we take a look at the other goodies I have got. To getting myself a nice tasty cup of the old Charlie, or a nice brew as we say in uh, Anglais, I got something through the post today which I ordered. Not the dog. He's uh, always been here, and it's actually, it's not a 4.5 inch screen, I got a 5 inch uh, HDMI LCD display, Now I've already tested it works, so I've plugged it in, it has a HDMI on the top, uh, as well as a USB to power it, it also has some things on the back here, which 
you hobbyists may or may know better than me. There's a pinout here which has ground SV SV um, IRQ. I presume we can solder to these pads, but I'm not entirely sure what we can solder to these pads. We have uh, a button here which simply switches off the display. It's just a switch. You can switch off or on the display, but this display does have an automatic shut off anyway if there's no signal going to it. So it will work perfectly. It's an 800 by 480 display, so it's not HD, but it does downscale your 1080p signal to that resolution. And I tried my PlayStation 4 out on it earlier, and it looks quite nice. So my idea is to get this into the front of the this case, because there's ample space in here. In the back there, if I don't put the main board back in, uh, which is what my original plans were to do, then there's ample space. Uh, this little screen thing uh, came in a nice little anti-static bag with a screen protector. It usually plugs straight into a Raspberry Pi via that uh, via that port there, but we won't be using that unless I find a way to put my Orange Pi PC in there. Um, but the, yeah, the GPIO I don't think it's the pinouts the same. It came with some nice little standoff screws uh, and a basically a U-turn um, HDMI to HDMI, which is male to male. It would have been nice to have been male to female. Um, and then we could have plugged an extender in, but again, if I've sat it upright, it saves space, so that's always good. Now the issue is this uh, this front panel here. Um, the the original display came out of this slot, and I don't know if you can see it quite so well. There is actually some depth to that slot, um, which means that the slot was created for the screen to go into it at 4.5 inches and I'm not sure how wrong they were with regards to CRT screen sizes but I'm not sure that's going to cover our 5 inch display and I don't currently have the tools to to do anything with it so I'm going to try now and just see if it comes anywhere close to that but I have a feeling it's not going to and the answer is no and by quite a lot um, if you can see that, if I was to get it round to the front, there's quite a big margin of loss. Even if I take out some of this side piece, um, which I can't take out all of because there's a clip there that holds it in place. But you can see there's, there's, a, there's a, at least, I'd say, getting this in... I'm going to have to cut out the chassis, uh, the bits here, so there's a bit there which gives us an extra millimetre, um, but then obviously the extra millimetre, if I can cut down under that clip, and cut out from down under there, and then Dremel out here, I'm obviously going to have to keep this clip in somehow because that screws into the top of the case. Um, and this side is going to be exactly the same to be able to close her up. Unfortunately, as it stands, I could, I could, I could fit her in, uh, like further back into the case. But then you're going to really notice the distance between the LCD and the front. Now the the loss of uh, the loss of a few mil of actual screen won't make a massive difference because with these days you can scale the screens to how you want them um, but it's still going to be a loss nonetheless so we're going to have to figure out how to do that uh, like I said I don't have a Dremel tool so I might have to just cut around and see if I can cut it out I, I don't want to I really don't want to put the CRT back in there and I know a lot of people have been um, on the Discord, I've been telling me to just put the CRT back in, but I don't want to put the CRT back in. I thought it would look cool with a nice little LCD screen in there, and we could hopefully get away with that. So we shall see. I'm hoping we're not going to lose too much in the way of screen. So that's my little project. So, before I actually post myself doing anything else with this, I wanted to ask you, the community, uh, what I should actually do. Should I indeed put the CRT back together and have it hooked up um, to a converter instead and use the LCD for something else? 
or should I try and dremel out some of this to give us some space either side um, which will hope us, hopefully give, give us enough in the way of half an inch to get that screen in place in there um, and have everything else just put in place so like the buttons but uh, like the on and off button which I don't think I'm going to be able to get working uh, without a circuit or knowing how to do circuits so I may need some help with that if that is the option so yeah I'll leave it up to you guys but ultimately I did buy the screen for this so do take that in mind and I do hope to get the screen in there at some point even if not straight away but let me know what you guys would like to see and whether you think it would be worth using the screen in a different project because for now I'm not too sure what to do. I hope you enjoyed this little insight as to what I have planned for the uh, channel. Just something a little bit different and uh, hopefully we can get some cool stuff going on. Maybe you want to see the CRT up and running with some games on. Maybe we could do that. I don't know. I shall see you very soon. Cheers.